Hi, welcome back to this video series on quadratic residues. In the previous segment, we talked about how quadratic residue concept was used by Goldwasser Mikli encryption system to encrypt a binary message zero or one. Of course, it can be extended to encrypt um, non-binary as well. As, as soon as we convert a message into zeros and ones, we can apply this again and again to, to send a message from Alice to Bob, which makes it difficult for the eavesdropper to, to break the system um, because there is an assumption that it's computationally difficult to test whether a number is a quadratic residue or not a quadratic residue. Okay. So uh, in this segment, I'm going to continue the discussion of, of the same crypto system and show you an important property called homomorphic property. Um, this particular encryption system has this homomorphic property that may be desirable in some situations, especially in multi-party computations. Okay, so um, what kind of homomorphic properties uh, um, um, this particular system has is an interesting question. Um, it turned out that we can just apply the formula and right away find out that um, this particular system is actually additive homomorphic. So um, let's re recall very briefly uh, without going into all the details, um, the, um, the, the Goldwasser Mikli crypto system. Okay, so uh, we have Alice and Bob, right? They wanted to talk to each other. Uh, let's assume Alice wants to send a message to Bob. And uh, all Alice does is basically uses Bob's public key, right? Uh, in this crypto system, the public key is generated by Bob. Uh, let's assume Alice wants to send a message to Bob. Bob generates uh, a public key pair, right? N comma um, Z. N is made of uh, two prime numbers P and Q, um, which is which are kept private by Bob. Uh, and Z is a, a special number, right? And the number is uh, not a quadratic residue. Uh, it doesn't belong to a quadratic residue category. Uh, and also, uh, it has another property that the Jacobi symbol um, of Z is plus one, okay? We talked about Jacobi symbol in, in previous segments, so I, I, I encourage you to watch those if you're not familiar with those terminology. Okay, so this is basically the construction on the Bob side. Um, Alice would just uh, use um, the public key to encrypt the message. Uh, of course, we assume here the message space is zero uh, uh, or one, right? It's made of zero, either zero or one is what um, makes the message space of this crypto system. So what does um, encryption look like? Encryption looks like this on the, uh, on the Alice side. She randomly picks a random number X, right? She squares that. Um, so let me create some room here. Okay. So what she does is basically um, she, she uses the Z, right? Z is public. Um, here it is, right? And she multiplies it by another random number X that she generates. She doesn't show to anybody. Um, and she raises Z to the power M, okay? And she does it in mod N. What kind of X is that? X is an element in Z star N group, okay? X is a randomly picked element uh, in Z star N, okay? We talked about Z star N in many, many videos, so I will skip this definition of Z star N. Now comes the, the, the property of homomorphism. Let's assume um, the um, let's assume we have two ciphertexts, C1 and C2. Okay. We, we don't know exactly what messages are encoded. It could be zero or one. So what happens if you uh, take two, two ciphertexts, C1 and C2, and multiply? Well, remember C C1 is made of um, Z power sum M message M1. We don't know whether it could be zero or one and you multiply it by x square. Similarly, uh, C2, C2 is made of um, the same Z and another message, they may be equal to M1, we don't know, but we don't care, so we just make it M2. And another random number, so let's call it X1 here, X2 here, okay? So if you multiply now um, these two things and do some little um, uh, adjustment uh, using algebraic rules, what we see here is that we get is M1 plus M2, right? Because of the properties of exponent. And uh, we can just treat X1 
x2 uh, square. Okay, now if you compare the structure with the general structure, <coughs> excuse me, what we are seeing here is that this everything is in modian, of course, this is also in modian. Okay, c1 times c2 <coughs> has exactly the same structure as this particular formula, right? This is the encryption formula. Um, we can replace x1, x2 by some other constant, right? So we get exactly the same structure. So what the beauty is that now if, if you send C1, C2 to Bob, um, Bob will uh, uh, do his decryption logic using the private keys that he, that he has, like P and Q. He will be able to tell whether uh, C1 times C2 uh, corresponds to uh, encryption of M1 plus M2 or um, without even knowing M1 and M2, okay? So uh, you are only sending um, C1 times C2, right, to, to Bob. Uh, Bob will do a quadratic residue test, right, because he knows the prime factors of N. If the answer is a quadratic residue, what can he say? He can tell for sure that M1 plus M2 must be zero, okay? Uh, if it is um, non-quadratic residue, then he knows M1 plus M2 must be one, okay? But he cannot tell which, whether whether M1 is equal to M2 from that fact, right? Um, so basically, it's like XR kind of thing. Okay, so th this is this is the idea of the somomorphic encryption: is that uh, you multiply ciphertext. The resulting ciphertext actually, when you decrypt it, uh, you get to know about some function of the input messages. So in this case, M1 plus M2. So if I can generalize it, so basically what we did is we encrypt message M1, right, using um, this Goldwasser Mickley encryption scheme, and we multiply uh, that with the encryption of M2. Uh, we send it to Bob. When Bob decrypts it, um, this is multiplication, okay? When Bob decrypts this uh, whole thing, okay, what happens? He, he can find out the value of M1 plus M2. In, um, in the message space, M made of zeros and ones, right? That's the only thing. So basically, you have only two possible values for message. I, from a group theory perspective, this is nothing but Z2 group, right? This is the important fact of homomorphic property here. Encryption of M1 times M, encryption of M2, when you decrypt it, you get M1 plus M2. Okay, so um, this is this is really nice property. So if you apply, um, a, you can also rewrite it like this, encryption of M1 times encryption of M2 is equal to encryption of M1 plus M2. Basically, if you apply the encryption operator on the both sides, you would get this equation from the from this bot or from this equation, right? Because you, E and D will cancel out, so you have E here. That's basically what I did. So what you're seeing is that uh, this is called the homomorphic property. Okay, it's called additive homomorphism because multiplying the ciphertext gives you addition here. This is addition, and I will show you an example concept so to get get this idea across. I have implemented a small um, Python program which is uh, not necessarily cryptographically secure, but it's okay. I have been developing this for just proof of concept. Um, anyways, just to warn you about that. So let's take this program that we used in the previous segment, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I will do encryption of M1 and M2, right? And I will show you that when you multiply the ciphertext and decrypt it, uh, you will get the additive property that I talked about. So let's take this example here. We encrypt message zero and uh, well, I will keep this uh, key size smaller for demo purpose to just get it quickly. Although uh, 512 is a very weak key size, okay. So um, this this is encryption of zero, right? I encrypt zero using Bob's uh, public key. Now I'm allies here, allies here. And uh, when, when when Bob decrypts it, he, he, he should get exactly the message M0, okay? That's what we are asserting. And uh, let's do the same with um, M1, let's encrypt the message one, right? Encrypt message one. And we expect that, of course, when Bob decrypts, it should be better come as one. Okay, we can check it. We can run it and if the assertion, yeah, you see here, it, it, it is not showing any error. Let's just introduce an error to convince ourselves that the assert is in place. Yeah, you see assertion error. So we, now let's multiply the ciphertext uh, C0 and C1. So in this case, I claim that the answer will be one when you decrypt it because uh, additive homomorphism, right? So let's see whether we get a one when we decrypt the multiplicative, we multiply C0 and C1, they are ciphertext, right? 
and then we decrypt okay so what do we expect this to have we expect this to be as i mentioned earlier in, on on the drawing board that if you multiply cipher text you better get the addition of the messages so in this case the messages are basically 0 and 1 right and if you add 0 and 1 you get 1 that's what exactly we, we should get let's just try it yeah it works we can convince ourselves if you make a mistake that it directs yeah such an error so this is additive homomorphism so what happens if you put one here for example uh, when you put one here and one here additive homomorphism property because of the model arithmetic uh, we should get a zero here right remember the, the only allowed um, message uh, um, is either zero or one uh, for this homomorphic property to be true so one plus one is, is actually zero in mod two because we said only we are allowing zero and one as part of the message so let's give it a try yeah we can convince assert is true by making a mistake. Yeah, assertion failure, that means it must be here. So this is a very nice property. Um, it has some applications uh, in multi-party computations and homomorphic encryption, uh, this, this concept. Um, it may be desirable in some situations to have this homomorphic property in some situations not. Uh, depending on the context, uh, homomorphic properties are desirable uh, or not, okay. So what you have learned is that uh, this um, Goldwasser-Mikli crypto system allows you to multiply ciphertext, uh, and when you decrypt uh, that particular ciphertext, uh, you are basically computing the addition of the values. So you may not know the actual values, right? Say in, in um, zeros and ones are some kind of uh, opinion um, made by two people, and uh, they multiply their ciphertext and send the result to the uh, third party. The third party can now decrypt if, if they know the private key and then can tell whether um, the the total is, is uh, zero or one without knowing exactly who, who contributed to what that's basically the the, the whole purpose of this uh, of this um, encryption property uh, homomorphic property okay all right uh, that's basically it thank you very much for your attention